Before we start working with our production model, we will talk about the steps that we usually take with the standard workflow whenever we want to make normal maps, and then compare them with the steps in the DRS Tools workflow. There are many variations of the standard workflow, however the basic idea is that we create low-res and high-res models, we then create UVs, and take all our high-res models and run them through the very time-consuming process of decimation. Then, after exporting all our models into another 3D application like Maya or Max, we create these modeling groups for the low-res models, and rename the low-res and high-res models with the corresponding suffix. We then create texture sets that will be used in Substance Painter, and manually explode the models, and create cages for them. Finally, we export all the models into a texture baking application like Substance Painter or XNormal to make our normal maps. However, in this course, we are mainly going to focus on baking normal maps inside Substance Painter. Now, if we compare these steps with the DRS Tools workflow, you can see that there are only four critical steps that you need to take in order to be able to make your normal maps. To have more control in your workflow, though, we strongly advise that you import the lower resolution models into another 3D application and properly create smoothing groups and texture sets. However, in this training course, we are only going to use these four steps to demonstrate that they are enough to create your normal maps. Now let's jump back into ZBrush and have a look at the production model. As you can see, this is a very dense model, it's around 800 million polygons, and it's made out of approximately 300 subtools. This model also has UVs and more targets at the lowest subdivision. We are now ready to begin the process of exploding the model and creating cages using the DRS Tools plugin. In order to save some time on this training course, we are only going to run this process for the thruster. However, at the end of the course, we will show you the bake of all the model in Substance Painter. Now let's have a look at the scene that we will be working on. We took some time to remove the subtools of the rest of the spacecraft as we will only demonstrate the process for the thruster. And we advise that you also split your models into sections based on your UV layouts whenever you are working on a very dense model that has multiple UV layouts. We also previously mentioned that this model has UVs, which is a critical step in order for a ZBrush to Substance Painter workflow to work. Okay, so let's begin the process. Hold down Shift and click on any of the filters to open the map. And make sure that you have unique names for all the subtools. If you are not sure whether your subtools have unique names, you can use their name all function that we previously demonstrated. Next, we will open the Transform tab. And make sure that X, Y, and Z axes are enabled and expose is set to zero. Let's zoom out a bit. And hold on Shift and X to test the distance of the subtools when exposed. Now simply rotate the viewport around and make sure that no subtool is colliding. Okay, I'm happy with that, but if for whatever reason your subtools are colliding, or they are too close to each other, you can change the distance under the preferences as we demonstrated earlier. Now let's open up the cage tab, where you will find five different methods of creating cages. All methods have approximately the same buttons, and we compare them in detail in our documentation file. However, you should always start with method 1, as it is very quick and creates the best results out of all methods. So let's open method 1, where you will find four different buttons that will help you create your cages. Now before we start creating our cages, it is very important that we hold down Shift and X to reset all the subtools to their original position. Now let's talk about the functions under method 1. The first one is called Cage All Adjust Radius and will simply generate a cage for all subtools. This is great for whenever you want to manually explode your models after creating your cages. The second is called Create Cage Adjust Radius and will only create a cage for the selected subtool. The next button called Explode Cage and Align All Subtools Morph Target will generate a cage for every subtool. Then it will explode all the models and align each of the low and high resolution models along with their corresponding cage. And the last one is called Cage and Align Exploded Subtool Morph Target and it will allow you to reposition a subtool that was previously exploded and then recreate its cage. Before we continue with creating our cages, we first need to export our low resolution models at their current position. To do that, click the All Low button, and under the Morph Target tab, click the Multi Switch Morph Target button. And make sure that the UV button is enabled under the Merge tab, and click Merge Visible. ZBrush has now created a new merged subtool with UVs that we can export for our baking purposes. 
So let's open the Subtool Master plugin now and click the export button. Give it the name that you can remember and save it. Now let's go back to where we were. Select the original tool. And go back to the Morph Target tab and click the Multi Switch Morph Target button. Then, when all subtools are switched, click the All High button. Now we can continue. The next thing that we need to do is to test the size of our cages. To do that, we simply need to take a look at the model and select the subtool that has approximately the biggest pushed out detail. Then we will use the second button called Create Cage Adjust Radius to create a cage for the selected subtool. This generated cage will give us an approximate radius value that we need to use to create the rest of our cages. So let's do that. I will use this subtool here as it has both pushed in and pushed out details and it should be good enough to create the sample cage. So let's click on the create adjust radius button and then click OK. Then we need to type in a radius value. If you are not sure what value to use, please use 20 as the default value. So let's do that. OK. Now let's have a look at the cage that we created. It has covered all our details, so a value of 20 should be enough for the rest of the subtools as well. We can see, however, a few polygons being compressed on the front side of the model, which should create a few artifacts, so we'll show you later on in this course how you can very easily fix them. For now though, let's create the rest of our cages. So I'll delete the cage and zoom back a bit. and then click the Explode Cage and Align All Subtools button. A pop-up will appear asking you to make sure that you have UVs on all your subtools. We know that, so let's click OK. And then we will enter the same value that we used earlier. So let's put 20 and press Enter. Now we wait. Excellent. Now let's see what we have. If we look closely, we can see that all our details are covered by the cages and we have no intersections. However, we do have compressed polygons on subtools that have pushed in topology and this will most probably create artifacts on those areas during the baking process. We will show you how to very easily fix those artifacts later on, but for now, let's export the current models and test what we have. To make things easier for us, we will use the functions under the visibility tab. Click on the Visible If Cage button. This function will make all the subtools invisible besides the one that contain the word cage in their name. OK, now if for any reason you see ZBrush freeze like what's happening now, don't worry about it. It's still calculating. We won't pause the recording to demonstrate that this can happen based on how much RAM or processing power you have and how dense each subtool is. So just give it some time to process all the calculations and it will unfreeze itself in a few seconds. You should only really worry if you see ZBrush close completely. OK, it's done. And if we scroll up on our subtool list, we can see that only the subtools that contain the word cage in their names are visible. So next, we need to merge all the cages. So select any of the cages and go to the Merge tab. Make sure you have UVs enabled and then click Merge Visible. ZBrush has now created a new tool 
with all the cages merged. We need to do the same for our Lores models, so let's turn off all the subtools. And then we'll use the visible by name function to turn back only the ones we want. Type MTA and press enter. These will make visible all the more target aligned subtools, which are basically our Lores models. Then make sure to select any of the MTA aligned subtools and click Merge Visible. Next, select the non-exploded model we created earlier and rename it. And then append the Merge MTA aligned subtools. Rename the subtools to something like underscore exploded. And then export these subtools as an FBX file. For our FBX settings, we'll use visible, binary, and smooth normals. And then click export. Give the file a name. And save it. Next, in the same manner, we will export all our cages. However, you can also choose to export them as an OBJ file. Lastly, we need to get back to our original tool and export our high res models, and we can do that without wasting time decimating them. It's still an option though, so we'll make all the subtools visible. And using the invisible by name function this time, we will hide all the cages and empty align subtools. Then select any of the higher subtools and export them as OBJ or FPX files. Let's use the OBJ for this example. Simply go to the Subtool Master and click the Export button. Because this takes a lot of time, we have already paused the recording and exported all our high-res models. So we'll click Cancel. We are now ready to jump into Substance Painter and make our first bake. 